Today I'm talking about foot and leg cramps. So down here, through the calf muscle, through the arch. This happens a lot. A study said that up to 60% of adults can get this and almost 10% of kids. So there's a lot of different causes. I'm gonna tell you why it's happening and the absolute best ways to solve it starting now. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us, so thank you. I've got 11 causes here. There's 11 different things that happen here. Some of them are dangerous. Some of them are very easily correctable. That's the beauty of cramps. There's a lot of different causes. Cramps and spasms can really hurt in the arch, in the calf muscle. This can make your muscles bend, stay contracted, cause a lot of pain. There's a lot of causes and we're gonna show you how to fix these problems so this pain goes away for you. The one most dangerous thing is vascular disease, diabetes, blood clots. If you have severe calf pain, there's one way to check this is, if you squeeze the calf muscle, that's called a Homan sign if it hurts. That might mean that you have a blood clot. That can make your legs uh, have problems. This is very common if you've had a history of blood clots, if you have a family history of blood clots, if you smoke, if you've got prior heart problems, blood flow problems, this you have to check out with your doctor. You know, if your toes are really throbbing, if you have like crippling pain, get to your doctor, get checked out. This is for the unhealthy people though that have a lot of health problems. If you're like a young 20 year old kid, highly, highly unlikely, although nothing's ever guaranteed in medicine for sure, so be safe. Another common thing is nerve disease. So peripheral neuropathy of both feet really ache, like really bad at night and nothing gets it better. This is diabetes, this is smoking, alcoholism, getting up there in age. If you're like 70, 80 years old and this is happening, this could be nerve problems. Again, you have to get checked out by your doctor. But again, if you're a healthy 20, 30 year old, highly, highly unlikely unless you've got serious health issues, but always get checked out if worried. If you're pregnant, this isn't everybody, so I'll be quick. If you're pregnant, in the second and the third trimester, this is very common, doctors can't really agree on why, but a lot of these other tips will help with that. So I'm gonna skip the pregnancy. Excessive alcohol. So alcohol can cause alcoholic neuropathy. This could cause nerve pain. This could cause blood sugar issues. This could cause you to be in poor health. This could cause you to interpret pain very poorly or have trouble sleeping. So if you're drinking a lot of alcohol, this is the second most common cause of nerve damage that I see behind diabetes, severe alcoholism. So if you're drinking too much, and you have some health problems, that's probably why you're getting a lot of cramps and spasms. Nutrient deficiency, especially as you get older, the big ones are vitamin B as in boy. So a lot of studies, and I present on this at conferences, is vitamin B supplements can really help with nerve pain. So you don't have to go crazy and buy those expensive nerve supplements. Generally, those are not proven. So I'll, I'll say this again, don't spend crazy money on the nerve supplements. They're not always very well proven unless your doctor tells you to take them. Uh, but even a daily multivitamin, make sure you're getting your basic B vitamins. That can really make a big difference. Studies have shown that that does help with cramps and spasms at night. This includes vitamin B, magnesium, folate, Dehydration is another one. Drinking water. Some studies, you know, I always remember it was eight glasses of water, but a lot of studies now are saying like 10, 15 cups a day is what people need. Obviously smaller people on the lower end, bigger people may need up to 15, especially if you're a hardworking person in the sun, outdoors, make sure you're well hydrated. This is probably the biggest one that I see. Check out all the muscles down here. In your arch, your calf muscles. Why is it your feet? because they are the hardest working muscles during the day. Every step you take is all of your body weight with momentum. This is what's called delayed onset muscle soreness. So what happens is while you're doing the activity, like standing all day, it's not bad, but when you're in bed at night, the blood flow slows down. And this fills up in your muscles and it stretches your nerves and your nerves spasm. That's a huge cause of cramps. To me, that's the most practical reason. So if you're on hard surfaces, on concrete, if you're walking all day in like a trade or a teacher or a nurse, this is probably the cause for you. 
when this hits you in the middle of the night, just get up out of bed, start rotating your ankle. So do little circles, get your plantar fascia mobilized, get your calf muscle mobilized. And what you can do is you can grab a towel if you can't reach your toes. If you can reach your toes, just push on your toes. But if you need a towel, grab a bath towel, push on your calf muscle, your foot in the middle of the night or while you're on the couch, this will stretch those tissues. It'll get that fluid out of there that's stretching those nerves and causing that spasm. 90% of the time, this will get it feeling better and massage your plantar fascia, massage your calf muscle, massage your heel, whatever spasming. Just get in there, get in there with your hands and massage it and you'll start to feel better. I love to use gravity whenever I stretch. So right here, getting that towel underneath your toes keeps it giving a little bit more of a stretch, really targets that calf muscle, really targets that hamstring. As you get that inflammatory sore fluid out of there, those nerves can relax because there's less swelling in the muscle and get the hamstrings, get the groin muscles, get the glutes, all of that contributes, especially if you have sciatica or hamstring tightness or calf tightness, do it all. So what happens is how do you solve these? This is very, very correctable. Number one, you want a good supportive pair of shoes. That's the single best thing you can do. You want a good pair of shoes. So look at this, I can't bend this shoe. It's got a stiff heel. Look at how thick it is right here. That's a lot of foam cushion. For some people that's not enough. Look at this shoe, this is even thicker. This is the maximum of the shoe. So some people need all that support. If you've got huge cramps, rather than going the extreme routes, and I mean like anything past taking a daily multivitamin, consider a good supportive pair of shoes. Look at how supportive this is. And rather than jamming into the front, look at how these roll. So this has a rocker bottom, plus it's very well cushioned. Look at a regular shoe like this. It's flimsy, that's not supporting you, there's nothing in the back, and look at, when you walk, it doesn't really roll. Whereas look at this one, it rolls across, plus it's super well cushioned, plus it's got a supportive back. That's how you stop the muscles from getting damaged, nerves getting damaged, blood flow swelling. That delayed onset muscle soreness is what causes your cramps and spasms in most cases, I find. That's why kids don't get it as much. Kids don't get it as much, teenagers don't get it as much because they're light. Usually they're under 100 pounds, whereas most adults are rarely under 100 pounds. Plus adults work harder than kids. Kids stay at home all day playing video games. The next thing is even beyond the shoes, check this out. When you walk, look at how much your arch flattens out. Look at how much your ankle bit can bend. But watch this, an orthotic like this, I'm pushing down, look at, it's not flattening out. That arch is not flattening out. Whereas without it, look at how much it flattens out. Whereas right here, look at, nothing's flattening out. That stops your muscles from overexerting it makes the hard floor softer and that gets you feeling better. So that will stop a lot of that soreness, but one day won't do it. Sometimes you need to do this for a week or two weeks for all that swelling to come down and for you to feel better. If you're wearing a good shoe like this from nine to five, but then you go home and you're back walking barefoot, you're not really gonna get better. That's where people suffer, especially before they go to bed at night. Check out these, a good pair of slippers with an insert in there. That can really help. Or, or even a pair of Crocs, even though they're not that good, they're not perfect, they're 10 times better than walking barefoot because your foot is better supported. So come on, an over-the-counter orthotic like this, it's 20 bucks or so, a pair of Crocs, 20 bucks or so, you don't have to spend a ton of money and that could solve a lot of people's cramps in the morning or at night and get you sleeping better. Speaking of which, not getting enough sleep can cause more nerve problems, but if you're having cramps, you can't sleep well. So it's a vicious cycle. If you're not taking care of your feet, you're not sleeping as much and you're feeling the pain more. What's another thing? Check out this. I love Biofreeze. So icing your feet can help using Biofreeze, this is a roll-on, it's kind of like icy hot, so rolling this on the bottom can really help before you go to sleep, that can keep that swelling down. That does a pretty good job. I love the Biofreeze as a remedy that takes great care of things. Foot massagers, getting your feet massaged, there's a lot of great products out there that can massage your feet and get that swelling out of there before you go to sleep. So massage before you go to bed. Great massaging can be an ice bottle, a frozen ice ball, 
use stuff that you have in your house. A water bottle like this can really help if you freeze it. Simply freezing it will help numb the nerves in your foot. That will prevent spasms. And the massage aspect will get that inflammatory fluid out of the bottom of your foot. It'll make you feel better. It'll make you less likely to have nerve spasms, less likely to have pain in the future. These ice balls are pretty good for the muscles. They're tough for the foot because look at, they're not really heavy. They're not grounded like an ice bottle, but they're great if you have calf muscle cramps. They're great for your thighs, for your chest, for your arms. These massage balls, they don't ice, but they're cheap. They're readily available. You don't have to worry about freezing them. And those rubber nubs are really good at digging into your fascia, getting rid of that inflammatory fluid. That right there is going to give you a few hours of relief, especially if you're having pain at night. Just make sure it's not one of those blood clot type causes because this is more for muscular pain. And a massage roller stick, I love these things. And foam rollers, these things can be like five to 10 bucks online on sale now. They're a little bit more on average, but listen, for your lower back, for your glutes, for your hamstrings, I love foam rolling like this. For some people, it's a little bit harder to foam roll because they're not as flexible. That's where the stick can come in, but get all that fluid out of your hamstrings, out of your glute. I have a lot of sciatica pain, and this keeps me limber, keeps me flexible, keeps my sciatica from hurting, especially when I sit at home doing my medical charts pretty much all day long. And for the lower leg, I love the massage roller stick. This gets a lot of the swelling, a lot of the pain out of the calf, out of the side of the leg, the perineal tendons, the gastrocnemius muscle. So just doing this like 30 seconds and on the front, just make sure not to press on your bone, that might hurt, but your anterior muscle groups. Listen, this isn't gonna make you heal quicker, but it does loosen you up so that you can then stretch so that your cramps go away for at least the nighttime. So look at that, that's a full massage routine. I just did in 30 seconds to about 60 seconds, my glutes, my hamstrings, my thighs, my calf muscles, and now my plantar fascia. What more can you ask for? That's really loose. Inactivity, so that's another one. If you're not moving very much during the day, your legs will swell up. Walking a little bit can make a huge difference for you. So get up, move around. Sometimes you can ride a stationary bike before you go to bed or walk around a little bit. If you're sitting in a computer chair all day, you are gonna swell, you're gonna pinch certain nerves. That's another point, stationary positions. If you're in a computer chair all day, get up once every hour, walk around for five minutes, make sure that blood's flowing, make sure your muscles are moving. A big deal is now people staying at home, their legs will cramp and spasm and hurt more because they're, they're getting sciatica, they're sitting on their butt all day, their hamstrings hurt, their lower back hurts. Get up, move around, try different positions. Get special pillows to sit on your butt so those nerves aren't getting pinched day after day. It's not a permanent problem, but if you're doing the same stuff every day, it will cause the same pain every day. And finally, sleep position. If you're sleeping on your arm, if you're sleeping on your left hip or right hip, keep that in mind. Maybe you wanna get a special pillow between your legs. Maybe you want to pad underneath your feet. Maybe you want a pillow under your armpit. I know I have to do this to help my shoulder because I have a shoulder injury because I sleep on one side, which is always my right side. And what happens is get a pillow, test different strategies out, try different products online. If it's your hip or if it's your calf or if it's your arm, these things padded and you will feel better. You want to massage and you want to stretch. So massaging and stretching will take a lot of pressure off your calves, your hamstrings. So before you go to bed at night, massage, stretch, this makes a huge difference. But when you wake up in the middle of the night, when you're on the couch, just grab a towel, you know, warm up, massage it, but then stretch, getting down to your feet. So stretching out your hamstrings, your calf muscles, because you can get spasms in your hamstrings too. But take a towel if you can't reach your toes and take it around your foot. This will stretch out your arch muscles and your calf muscles. This will get all of those feeling better. So your arch, your calf muscles, and just hold it for like 10 seconds. So uh, right here, I'm just counting to 10. It's really getting that stretch out of there. What this does is it gets that fluid out of your muscles and gently relaxes them so those nerves aren't as overworked. These devices can work great. I love an ankle slant board. Realistically, if you're gonna use gravity, I do this every morning. I get on my exercise bike 
and I gradually move through the levels. And what I mean by that is like month one, I'll start at like five to 10 degrees. And you could see here, this is after like two to three months, you could really move up there and look at how much flexibility I got. I can get way past my toes with my ankle bent and it moves from about 10 degrees to about 45, 50 degrees. You could see I've gotten a lot of use out of this board. My kids uh, spilled the milk, a ton of stuff on here. So it gets pretty dirty. That's how much I use it. This half moon device right here, it can really hurt your toes. So I don't do it barefoot. See, I'm putting an orthotic in my shoe, kind of how I showed earlier in my demonstration. That can really help the calf muscle because these stretch boards and these half moon devices, realistically, they're not very fun if you're barefoot. They hurt your bones, they bruise the bottom of your foot. But see, a device like this could really target your calf muscle. Is it worth it? I don't think it is. Realistically, if you're gonna buy something online, if you had the money, go for the ankle slant board right here. Do both feet at the same time, just lean down into it. Pick this part of your morning routine. It will make your hamstrings um, more flexible. It'll make your calf muscles more flexible. And every day as you wear good shoes, good orthotics, you're gonna have a lot less impact on your muscles. You're gonna have a lot less inflammation. Your muscles should ideally spasm less if you're in that majority, like 80 to 90% group. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us. So thank you.